what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. We are jumping back into this 1967 Mustang Fastback. If you're just tuning in, let me catch you up. This car started as a Bugatti uh, movie car and it had one purpose, to be T-boned by police. And it served its purpose well. And then I bought it and decided it was gonna be a Mustang, but I had to cut it in half. And then I had to cut it in half again, and again. And then we welded it all back up together, and put the Mustang body on it. We went and gave it a shakedown over at LS Fest West, drag raced it down the drag strip, said, yep, that's a really good car, and then we put it into storage. Well, no, not really, that wasn't the game plan. What actually happened is we found this amazing rendering, this amazing design that had been done by Karana Devi, and I saw this car and I was like stunned, and I said, you know what, let's hit the brakes a little bit, let me contact this guy and say, can I build out your design in real life? And he was stoked on the idea. He said, absolutely, man, let me know if you need any help from me. I would be loving, I would love to see this thing in real life. So we, we stopped, we ordered everything that we needed, and now we have everything, and we're gonna build the car out to be the design. This is, in my opinion, like the coolest way to make a Mustang Fastback, so I really, really wanted to do it, and now we're gonna do it, and we're gonna have it ready to debut at SEMA in the Holly booth which is huge. So yeah, we got like less than 30 days to have this car built and ready for SEMA. Uh, so let's get, let's get down to work. Stay tuned. Before we get down to it, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience to your mobile phone. And Raid has just released the ultimate Death Knight. It's a super powered, legendary version of everybody's favorite champion, Death Knight. He'll help you to progress through the dungeons and the Doom Tower, Clan, or Hydra bosses. And we have a few words from Death Knight about this. Raid is giving you ultimate Death Knight, who reminder is not me, for free. Just log in and play seven times between now and October 27th, and Ultimate Death Knight is yours. Enter the promo code DKRISES for a ton of free items to instantly upgrade Ultimate Death Knight to level 50. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click the link in my description or scan the QR code right here on the screen, and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free Epic Champion, Ina, 200k Silver, one Energy Refill, and one XP Boost, and one Ancient Shard. All the treasure is going to be waiting for you right here, and remember the rewards are only available for the next 30 days days and only available for new players. Go click the link guys, you'll enjoy playing it. Thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to it. So today's been a really, really cool day. I, I woke up this morning 6 a.m. from a text with a text from Holly saying we've chose your vehicle to be in our booth, but we're very concerned about you getting it done and looking like the rendering in time. And I said, I promise you on my life, we will have this build looking perfect and ready for SEMA. And they said, all right, it's gonna be in our booth. Make it look good. So I feel like we got handed like the biggest challenge and it's against a really tight deadline, but I also, I know we can do it. We have a really skilled team. We have a really great vision. We have a good design and uh, we can make it happen. So let's jump into like what needs to make that happen. Oscar is really excited to get started slash nervous about the deadline. I could tell very tight <laughs> it's a very, very tight deadline. We don't have room for um, anything to go wrong. So he wants to uh, start working first on getting the doors because uh, it is the best way to build a car when you're doing a lot of custom stuff is you get the door set right with a quarter panel, then it tells you how you're gonna set your fender and everything like that. So, new doors, go ahead, fire away. Let's get some new doors with the fastback glass in them. Rocking and rolling. The guys got the new doors on. They're looking really, really good. They fit up very, very nicely. It takes quite a while to swap out all the internals, 
but we got it done and we've got some great looking doors uh so car looks super cool with it with it kind of all torn down like this now you guys remember might remember right before ls fest we ran out of time and we didn't waterproof this whole cowl situation so we just very lightly tack welded the cowl on there uh, and then we popped it back off to inspect what we got to change so what we got to do is plate in this area and then plate it down like that seam seal it all up and cover up these holes that way if now this car's never going to be left out in the rain but if if it did run into a rainstorm we don't want it to completely flood the car so we're going to get that through weatherproof it and then also the wind can't hit you when you're driving around either and get that all buttoned up That's a good looking under cowl area. You guys did a great job. So now we're gonna go ahead and seam seal everywhere. Seam seal it all up closed and then uh, it will get a coat of paint. We got that all seam sealed up and a layer of Steelit black on there. The, the Steelit is uh, corrosion resistant. It's got stainless steel built into it. So that's really good for uh, fighting the weather down in that area. So now we just got to take the cowl, get it back on there in the place that it goes and get it welded in there and we are good to go. We got the cowl back on there and that's all good. So now we're gonna go ahead and set the front fenders and we ran into a, a bit of an interesting issue here. So these are reproduction fenders. I don't know if they're from Dynacorn or not. They might be, but wherever they're from, they don't fit well, like whatsoever. It's a big, big issue. I've seen other people online posting about this, but this one, this is like really bad. So both of these fenders, are, are really not fitting up. So we immediately went and thought, well, it's probably our own fault with the door. We didn't, we didn't do something right about the door and blah, 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 blah. So we went and grabbed old green here, the OEM fender, and it fits up really, really nicely. It's just like a direct fit and we're good to go. This is just resting on here and it looks 10 times better. So what we've kind of been learning here on this process is that the reproduction metal isn't exact to what, how they used to produce the metal actually makes a lot of sense considering how many things we've fought um, in the process of building this car. So I think we're gonna look we're gonna look around and see if we can source a, a OEM an original um, fender for the passenger side. If we could, then we'll just run two OEM fenders. If not, it's gonna be hours of struggling with one of these ones to you know pray we can make it look right. All right, Oscar got the green fender fully bolted down and everything. It's fitting really, really good. We got some minor, minor adjustments we need to make, but we're definitely gonna go with this fender and I think we wanna go with OEM steel. We called around in our area and so far we have not found anything. So if anybody is in the Pacific Northwest area, they can get to the Portland area. Uh, either we can go to you or you can come to us that has a 67 or 68 passenger side front fender that's OEM sheet metal, uh, we're interested in buying it. So if anybody watching it is in, you know, hit me up, email me, Chris at BS for build. And we'll get one somewhere. Uh, for now, we're just gonna throw some bolts onto this one that we know doesn't panel gap line up right, but that's okay. We're just gonna keep working with it. So uh, we're gonna get the hood on here and then we're gonna start looking at the headlight buckets. And just with a quick, real quick test fit, these look like they're plastic, they're metal, they're actually very heavy. With a real quick test fit, you can see that the headlight bucket down here hits on our bumper and we're no longer running the 67 OEM bumper, so this bar can be moved and Oscar's gonna move it. Slight change of plans. Rather than cutting away at that bar quite yet, Oscar wants to try and salvage this fender. So the body lines on this fender are okay. They're just in the wrong spot. They really need to come in, but then once they match up, things seem like they'll match up. But obviously the distance from here to here is, is just too wide. So Oscar's gonna go ahead and try cutting some out of this and seeing uh, if maybe we can just cut it and modify it and get it to look right. There's, it's a long story, but with our wide body, there's gonna be a lot of fiberglass work in this area anyway, so it's not a lot of extra work to cut and, and skinny this thing up. Good luck, Oscar. 
it's either going in the trash because we're not using it and we're using OEM or you're going to fix it and we'll use it. So take a shot. Have fun. All right, Oscar made a valiant effort, cut it up multiple times, but it just it just really is not fitting the way that we wanted to see it fit up. Too big of a door gap, different gaps, just too many problems. So we're gonna save it just in case, but we're gonna move on expecting to replace it. So now we're going on to the headlight buckets. So part of our design, well, first off, the design is made by this guy named Karan Adivi, who is an amazing designer. He's given us permission to uh, build this thing out in real life. So here's the design, what it looks like on the front end. Really, when you account for the wide body and the different stuff and the custom front bumper, it's mostly just the headlight buckets that are the OEM parts. So it's easy enough to do the facelift for us. So what we need to do is make these headlight buckets flow into our hood and our 1967 fenders. So we'll either be modifying the fenders or the headlight bucket, not really sure. And this is the fun part. This is where we get to get really creative and trim and cut and fit and see what it looks like. I'm excited, let's go for it. Headlight bucket is installed. Now, this is gonna look a little crazy, guys, but you need to follow along with the vision here. This is actually working out pretty perfectly. So this body line flows perfectly into this headlight bucket. Uh, it has some adjustability in here. That they Don't mind that lip. Anyways, so that flows perfectly down into here. And then if you look at our design, here, I'll circle it on the screen for you. Straight from here, we have to start building off into our wide body. So we don't have to worry about the fact that there's so much overlap right here. And our car is all just getting wider. We build off of here and then it goes into our own custom front bumper that builds off of here and connects up with the wheel, which will be three inches further out this way. So that's actually a really big win. And we looked at all the other stuff as far as how we're gonna be building the grill and the angles and the everything, and we're digging it. We're liking how it looks. So now it's time to go ahead and get a bucket on the other side, and then we can look at it all together. So Oscar uh, modified the hood to have the rear hood poppers. We've been running these in a lot of cars where we run front poppers too. Um, and so they go right there off of these standoffs. And got he got the hood you know, adjusted straight with the cowl and straight with the other fender. So now it's time to full commit to the crazy modification of this thing and try and keep cutting until we get it to look right. Fender modification was a pretty decent success, although we still are open to the idea of an OEM fender if anybody's got one laying around. If you're close by, definitely don't hesitate to email me. So we've got the headlight buckets in there and we're shaping up and we're looking at the rendering. Where's the computer? Looking at that part. A lot of the parts, these aftermarket, I don't know, you know if these are aftermarket or, or really where they come from. They're not very good quality. The fit and finish is absolutely terrible. And uh, I have a feeling that if you hunted around for long enough, you might find a good one or 
whatever. It kind of, kind of seems to be the theme is a lot of these reproduction parts are not very good. So we're finding out that we need to make some parts for ourselves and we're basically figuring out what all those parts are. Oscar, you want to here, let's show them. So this is the lower grill piece. So you have to imagine with us for a second, we've got our headlights here, we've got our grill rolling through there, and then we have this lower grill piece that steps it out a little bit, and then our bumper we start to build off of this. Um, there is a, a little extension here, and then in the rendering this drops down by about one inch and goes across like that. So what we were doing is we were mocking up with this piece of sheet metal that we bought from the factory from the 70, 1970, the, uh, the angle, and the angle is like way harder than in the rendering, and way harder than what our hood is. We want the angle to be a little bit closer to what our hood is. So we're gonna go ahead and make a cut. <laughs> we're gonna make a cut right through here, <clears throat> widen that out and use that as a test piece because it's definitely not gonna be used in production because it's also crap. This kind of work. This is like the fun problem solving where the car really comes together and I don't know, it's awesome. By the way, this is how crap this piece was. It's got like some finish on it, like some, some uh, it literally, the finish just came off on painter's tape. It just peeled right off, so garbage. Anyways, we widened that out and we got the peak just how we want it and it's got just the right, so the hood's supposed to overhang just a little bit and we've got just the right amount of overhang. So that's awesome. We've got a strategy for how we're gonna build out the rest of this front end before we get into our front bumper, but that's gonna be a job for tomorrow. Uh, for today, I wanna show you guys how insanely wide we're gonna make this vehicle. So like I said before, these are the wheels that we're gonna use building for mock-up for everything like that. These are the wheels and tires, and then we have new wheels and tires uh, being produced. <laughs> you know what, to be honest, the tires are actually already produced, but the wheels are being made. So we're going three inches out more in the front and seven inches out more in the rear. We're gonna have to stack some wheel spacers to do this, but this is how wide the car is actually going to be. We have a 12 inch wide wheel in the back with a negative 120 millimeter offset. It's absolutely mental. Well, this looks uh, this looks a little crazy even even for us. But we have a saying around here when it comes down to like doing SEMA builds and stuff, trust the rendering. Trust the rendering, build to spec to the render, and it will turn out amazing. The rendering looks amazing, so as long as we build that in real life, you know. Yeah, it's really, really wide. Now, I wanna reiterate, there will be no wheel spacers. We have custom wheels being made that are the width and the offset of what we're emulating here. There's no wheel spacers in the long run, just awesome wheels being made. So. Uh, as I start to go this way, it gets really obvious of how insanely wide this thing is. It's, it's kind of crazy. The back is just nuts. Uh, the, the wheel and tire is going to go further inwards this way because uh, this is a 10 and a half and we're moving up to a 12. So it's going to go in more that way, which will look a little bit better. Um, but yeah, this is what, this is what the rendering called for. It's absolutely insane. So we get to build our own custom wide body kit. As you guys have seen in the rendering, it kind of comes off of here, flows out into here. This comes up more. Oh, the other thing is we're gonna lower the car a ton. This is as high as the car goes uh, because we were trying to stop a scraping issue that happens on 18 inch wheels. So we're upgrading to 19 inch wheels and we're just gonna slam the car all the way to the ground as low as it can be while still being drivable. Cause that's what the rendering does. All right guys, 29 days until SEMA. We're gonna make it. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the episodes on this here Mustang. Next episode, we're gonna be unveiling the other SEMA build and you won't wanna miss that either. Follow us, B is for Build, on Instagram for behind the scenes. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace!